Hi everyone, I'm Chef Leroy and welcome to My Cozy Kitchen. Hope you guys are having a great day. I certainly am. It's beautiful out and you know what? This is my first day of grilling. I know. We're already into like close to the 10th of May already and I haven't even grilled outside yet. So I'm going to grill some lamb rack today. This is New Zealand lamb rack. I got it from a friend of mine quite some time ago. And I thought, you know what? I got to get these lamb racks out of the freezer and get going on them. So I'm going to show you how to cook a lamb rack on the grill and then bake it as a finishing product. So let's get after it. All right, so I've got my lamb racks out here. Here they are right here. Each one of these are about a pound. So the first thing you want to do is take your lamb racks out of your packages that they came in. I like to rinse mine off and then pat it dry. Okay, I use a paper towel and pat it dry. And then I'm going to trim them just a little bit and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so you can see the lamb racks here are actually very, very clean. It's not a lot of fat on these at all. But the one thing I like to do is try to, I like to trim a little bit of this silver skin off right here. So take your sharp knife and run that along the skin here. And that'll keep your lamb from having a tough spot in it when you're chewing it. So let's trim that out nice and easy, just like that. And a lot of this, this other fat, I'm going to leave it on there. I just want to keep that on. Let's go ahead and just trim that nice and easy, just like that. And go across, okay? All right, <clears throat> there you go. So the next thing I want to do is I want to score the top of this, okay? Let's move this trim off. Take your knife and score the top. Just cut across, just like so. And go across the other way, little kind of diamonds. And that'll get, help that stay nice and tender as it cooks. You get all that seasoning in there too. And I'll show you that in a minute here. Beautiful, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna flip it over. And we're gonna score the bones. I do this with ribs too when I'm doing pork ribs. Score it back a little bit and that helps cut that membrane up. Make it a lot easier for you to eat. Everything will come apart really nicely. Just like so. All right, there we go. Let's put that back over, just like so. And let's go ahead and get the seasoning ready. Okay, you're going to want to put some fresh garlic on, whereas I'm using minced, so sprinkle a little bit of minced garlic on top. Okay, on both of them. Just like so. Okay, rub that around. Just like that, okay? And we want to do the other side. So make sure you clean your spoon really well before you dip it back into your minced garlic in your container or you will cross contaminate. So we don't want to do that. Okay, a little bit of garlic on the back side as well. Go ahead and spread that over the top. Just like that. And now we're good. Okay, so just leave them down like this. And I've got a mixture of smoked seasoning that I put together here. I'll tell you what I have in here. Okay, these are from these, these rolls of smoked seasoning that I have. I've got smoked garlic and smoked black pepper. And then I put in some, um, actually this is a Norwegian sea salt that I had picked up. And I've got some green peppercorn as well, okay? And I've got my really cool grinder here. So I'm going to load the grinder up with my seasoning. And I may have to fool around with this a little bit to get it all in there without dumping it everywhere. Go ahead and close this. And I'm going to, actually I should give it a shake real quick first. I've got it on kind of a medium grind here. Let's go ahead and season them up. Like so, flip it over. This one here I cut a little deep. Hopefully that's not going to cause me any issues, but um, I guess the only issue it's going to cause me is overcooking it. 
You don't want to overcook your lamb rack. That's not a good plan. All right, let's season it up really good. Let's take a smell on that. Beautiful. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'm gonna transfer them over to a tray. This is also gonna be my baking tray. So there you go, got them on a tray, and let's get them outside and get them on that grill. All right guys, I'm outside with my Komodo Joe grill and we are going to get our lamb racks on the grill. All right, so I've got it at about 350 degrees. It'd be nice to get a, maybe a little hotter, but that'll be just fine, okay? And they sizzle in nicely. Woo, beautiful. Look at that. They look amazing. Okay, we're gonna mark them off really nicely, get them nice and browned up. And we are going to bake them as well. And the key to baking them is to cook them at a hot temperature, but a short amount of time. And my plan is to actually do um, 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And it should be a perfectly mid-rare all right, one thing I decided to do is to cover it, drop the cover and open my vents all the way open so I can get a nice hot temperature going again. Because obviously when you open your grill, you're gonna lose some heat. So I went ahead and opened my vent in the bottom down here and opened the top vent all the way open to let a lot of uh, air flow so those coals will get really nice and hot again. And we'll get a nice charcoal char to those racks. I don't have any hardwood on here. I only have hardwood charcoal. Um, generally, I like to throw a little bit of hardwood and smoke a little bit, but I'm not going to do that this time with the lamb racks. I want to try it a little bit more natural to see how we like them. But anyway, the temperature's climbing pretty fast. It was down to about 225. It's already almost at 300 degrees. All right, let's just let them babies cook. There's a little bit of fire down there, so I'm going to go ahead and shut down that bottom vent a little bit to choke out that fire. And that should calm that down real quick. Oh, it smells so good. Woo! It's first grill of the year. Man, I'm so excited. Got to do a lot more this summer. Now let's take a look. Yeah, so now there's no fire in there. Okay, beautiful. But that smells just fantastic. This is the first time I've ever ever grilled lamb racks on my grill so I'm pretty excited so let's go ahead and open this back up and go ahead and flip that one rack over let's see what that looks like oh my gosh beautiful so I'm going to turn this I'm going to move this one over to here and I'm going to set this one on this side because that looks like that's the hottest side of the grill go ahead and shut that down again let her cook. Okay, one thing about lamb racks, when you're grilling them outside, make sure you do cook them on both sides. Now, you could finish these all the way on the grill outside if you wanted to. I'm going to do an inside method in my oven, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm not ready to eat yet, and I want to make sure that they're really perfectly done when we're ready to eat, and that only takes about 10 minutes. So I don't want to overcook them on my grill right now. I just want to get that really good grilled flavor into them. But again, make sure you cook them on both sides. All right, I'm going to take these racks off. Put them on my tray. I mean, it just smells so flipping good. I'm telling you, I wish the camera could catch the smell because it's incredible. All right, here we go, guys. All trade up. I'm going to bring these in the house, these beautiful lamb racks and uh, they're ready to be baked. So to top off my lamb racks, I'm gonna to top it off with some fresh herbs, some parsley, cilantro, green onion, and I do have a little bit of dill, so I'm gonna throw some dill in there. Now, what goes really well with lamb? We know that mint goes really well with lamb, but I didn't wanna go that route I'm doing a little different style with the grilling and everything else. So I'm gonna put the fresh herbs right on top of this beautiful lamb racks and roast it with those fresh herbs on top. All right, let's cut this stuff up. Okay, so I'm not really gonna give you exactly how much I'm using, but um, 
you know, just to make it easier. But I'm going to use a bit of this cilantro here. I'll use probably about this much of this green onion here. And I'm going to put everything in this bowl too and mix it all together. I'll use about a half of this bunch of parsley. And I'll probably use all of this dill. This dill is starting to get a little old. All right, so let's move this stuff off the board. So we've got some room to work. Make sure you keep your space nice and clear. And as you can see, I'm on a wood board now. I was using my nylon board for my lamb chop, and now I'm using my wood board for my vegetables. Just chop that up. Just like so. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in my bowl here. All right, let's take that green onion. Let's give that a nice small chop. I've not done it this way before, so. Okay, that's a nice green onion in there. Sorry, I got a timer going off for some other stuff I'm cooking. All right, cilantro. Cut that back a little bit, like so. Get a little bit of rough chop. that in your bowl just like that and we'll get some of this Italian parsley oh that smells so good love Italian parsley all right let's go ahead and add a chop that to your bowl. Now I probably have about, the way it looks here, it looks to be about a cup and a half of herbs cut up. Um, you can choose to use whatever you want. You don't have to do this step. I just think that the flavor should be pretty amazing, honestly. Go ahead and put your rack up on top here, lamb racks. Let's give the herbs a toss with a spoon so everything's mixed together nicely. Oh, it smells so good. All right, let's go ahead and throw that on top. Oh, that looks so good. If you got extra, that's okay. You can throw it into a salad. This is going to taste so good. Just go ahead and put that on top. There you go, guys. Oh, it smells so good. Just go ahead and let that sit on there until you're ready to put it in your oven. All right, guys, my toaster oven is preheated to 400 degrees. So let's go ahead and put these lamb racks right inside here. I'm gonna set it on the bottom shelf here. I'm reserving that top one for some vegetables that I'm doing. All right. So it's, I've got it for 10 minutes and 32 seconds. Well, it's counting down. And um, I'm gonna try this. So I saw one recipe out there showed to cook it for 10 minutes at 400 degrees. Now, also I've already pre-cooked these too. So it technically should work. Now here's the other thing I didn't tell you. I had this in my refrigerator for a couple of hours after I had grilled them, and then put the herbs all over the top of them. If you do that, make sure you pull them out about at least 30 minutes before you cook them. Let them kind of warm up a little bit to room temperature, and then pop them in your toaster oven. And we're gonna let this rest too. When they come out of that toaster oven in 10 minutes, I'm going to check the temperature. If I feel like they're not hot enough, I'm going to let, um, I'm gonna put them back in, but we will check the temperature and see where that internal temperature is. And just remember, we want them to rest as well. So let's let it cook and I'll show you what it looks like when they come out. Okay, so we got about one minute left of our cook time. Again, that's 10 minutes at 400 degrees. And usually what they recommend is you cook lamb to 145. But many lamb connoisseurs and chefs will tell you that that's too well done. Uh, generally, they like to cook it to about 130 to 135. I'm shooting for 135. I'm going to let it rest for a little while too. 
Um, I recommend at least resting it for about five minutes. I know some people say three. I think three is not enough. Usually when you let meat rest a little bit longer, that's a, a better option. So timer's gonna go off here and I'll pull that pan out and we'll check the temperature and see where we're at. Okay. I'll tell you what, they smell awesome. And they don't look like they're quite done enough. So I'm just gonna check. I was following somebody else's tip on this. And yeah, they're not done yet. Oh. We've got about 93 degrees, so we've got a ways to go. So let's go ahead and put them back in. I'm going to keep it at the same temperature. I'm on that bottom rack. And let's go ahead and hit start again. So we're going to go ahead and hit it for another 10 minutes. And let's let it cook. Okay, so I've got about 20 seconds left before the five minute time frame. And I want to check them again. So I don't want to overcook them, so I just want to go ahead and cook another five. That'll be 15 total. Okay, so that's five minutes. They're looking much cooked, much more cooked, I should say. Let's go ahead and check. They're up to 120. 124. All right, we're going to let it go a little bit longer. So go ahead and add that additional five. There we go. Oops. I'm not sure why that did that. Let's kick that back down to five. Okay, five minutes. All right, five more minutes and they should be right on the money. So as people online They'll give you tips and things on certain cooking ideas and temperatures and things, but everybody's ovens are a little bit different. Uh, again, I'm using a toaster oven, but it's on convection, so it does cook a little hotter. Um, I'm not sure. I watched some other person say that they did theirs for 10 minutes at 400 degrees and they were perfect, but I don't see that happening. So just really watch what you're doing. Um, don't take everybody's advice at face value, just make sure that you're temping your things out and you're paying attention to what you're cooking. Because remember, your oven is cooking your product, but in theory, you are the cook and you have to manage your food. So just because the timer is set does not mean it's cooking to the exact temperature that you need it to be. So I will be pulling this out in this next five minutes here and I'm going to let it rest because the temperature will go up a bit as it's resting. And I think we should be pretty much right on the money, nice and mid-rare. And we'll cut one open and we'll, we'll take a look at it just so you can see what it looks like. All right, let's let it cook. All right, so we got about 20 seconds left. I'm gonna pull the rack out. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bingo. Okay, they look really good, honestly. A lot more texture to them, so I'm gonna set them over here. Sorry, I'm off camera for a minute. I gotta put in some, my asparagus for my dinner. And what I'll do is I'll put all this together and I'll show you what the plate looks like at, at our, the time that we're eating so you can see what everything looks like. All right, so let these rest for at least five minutes. And uh, let's show you what that looks like over here. Beautiful. And let's check the temperature as well. All right, let's get a temp on these. Slide the thermometer in there. I got 135. Let's check this one, a little, bit, little higher in temp. Yeah, 135 there. 135 there. You wanna temp it in a couple different areas just to make sure you're right on. That's a little higher, that's that end piece. But we'll show you what it looks like when I cut it up and I'll take a picture of what the plate looks like and uh, I will post that at the end of the video for you to see. All right, let's give you a little recap on what we've done today. All right, guys, let's do a little recap on our 
lamb racks that we cooked today. So I had two lamb racks or about a pound each roughly. One was a little more than a pound, but the equivalent of the two of them together was about two pounds of lamb. What I did is I, if you, in the video, I cleaned off a little bit of that silver skin. Sometimes you'll get lamb racks that are completely full of fat. You can trim that fat cap down a little lower so you don't have quite as much fat on top, but these were already very well trimmed. All I did was take a little bit of that silver skin off just to keep them from being chewy. And then I scored the lamb and also just be careful. I have a pretty sharp knife and I actually sliced into one of my chops a little bit too deep. Be careful not to cut into it too deep. The main thing you're doing is to tenderize it a little bit with that knife and to get that seasoning to go down into your meat and you'll just have fantastic chops. I should say lamb rack, but you're cutting chops out of it. So anyway, then I grilled it outside. It didn't take very long. Make sure your grill's nice and hot. You probably only need about 10 minutes on both sides. Just make sure it's nice and browned up. And then you could put whatever you want on top when you bake it off. But what I did this time is I followed somebody else's, again, recipe on how long to cook it. And they were not correct, at least for not, for me it wasn't correct. So I cooked mine at 400 degrees for a total of 20 minutes, okay? So I started out with 10, checked it, wasn't cooked long enough, checked it at 15, still wasn't cooked long enough, went to 20, okay? So 400 degrees, 20 minutes. Every oven's a little bit different. Mine is a convection style oven, which usually cooks a little hotter. So that's pretty much it. Again, what I'll do is I'll post a video at the, or I'll post a photo at the end of this video, sorry, and so you can see what the whole meal looks like together. We're doing it with couscous, which I did a curry couscous, and also asparagus. So that's gonna be our complete meal for the evening. Um, I'll also show you what it looks like when I cut it, so you can see what that looks like. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, cook your lamb to 135 degrees at least. Um, again, recommendations by the health department usually requires it to be cooked to 145 but many lamb connoisseurs will say that that's overcooked. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It should be a really nice mid-rare. So um, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Give me some thumbs up. Hit that notification bell, ding, 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 ding. And please uh, feel free to give me some comments. Um, I'd like to know what you're thinking about. Um, if you have any other information about the dish, please, let me know and I'll try, to, um, I'll try to give you any information I can. If I can answer your question, that would be great. So anyway, guys, Chef Leroy and out. All right, guys, we're gonna give this rack a cut. And the main thing about resting your meat is to make sure that the juices seal back into the meat. So if you cut it and it's too hot, the, all that juice will literally bleed right out of your meat. So let's take a look at one of the chops to see how they look. Not bad. That's about a medium in the end. Oh, beautiful. Yep. Wow, they look so good. All right, we're going to enjoy this meal, guys. That looks lovely. That's some beautiful looking lamb chops there, guys. So let's go ahead and plate this up and we're ready to eat. I'll show you what that looks like in a nice, beautiful photo. Mm -hmm.